What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another Transfer Talk episode. As you can see from the title, Jan Flip Matita is on his way to Crystal Palace and in this episode I'm going to be joined by a Minds fan to give us all the insight on the player. But before we start with the video, make sure to hit the like button if you do enjoy the content and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes and let's get into it. But before we speak to Theo, let's quickly have a recap on the chaos that went on yesterday. So, Don Firefield reported that in the afternoon saying that Jan Fleep Medita could be on his way to Palace with a proposed 18-month loan move with an obligation to buy. Sky Sports have suggested that the 18-month loan deal will have a fee of around £2.7 million with an obligation to buy for £13.4 million if he starts 15 games for Palace. Towards the evening, it then got reported that all three parties have come to an agreement and that Matita was on a private jet to London for his medical, in which he has arrived now. Let's find out about our new signing by talking to a Mainz fan, Theo, who knows all about him. So, I'm joined by Theo, a Mainz fan, who's going to be giving us all the insight on Jan Fleet and Matete. Um, so, Theo, thank you for joining me first and foremost. And... For Palace fans that don't know this player, how would you describe him? Um, what is his playing style like? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I think it's quite hard to describe because Mateta is kind of a two-sided coin. Um, so there's the Mateta that we had in the first season he played for us. He got 14 goals and three assists. He was brilliant. Um, and that Mateta is... Um, a mostly clinical finisher with great heading abilities um, who still has to prove a bit on the amount of chances he actually scores. Um, and that Mateta is also very energetic and always feels dangerous. Um, and he's just mostly he's a joy to watch, uh, I'd say. But then there's also the other Mateta, and that's the Mateta we had lately. Um, and that Mateta is, he seems a bit slow and a bit tired and doesn't really do his job on pressing. Um, and yeah, he's just barely running up and down the pitch. So he's he's a two-sided coin, really. Yeah. So what would you say his main strengths are? What what's the key things out of his game that we could use to the, our advantage? Oh, uh, his physical abilities, obviously. Uh, his height and strength. And also his good positioning. His positioning was terrific in his first season with us. And his shot power is also very, very good. Um, and they, th those those uh, abilities are mostly what got him his 14 goals in his first season with us. Um, and if he's in form and feels good at the club, he will also turn uh, into a fan favourite pretty quickly. So we loved him in his first season with us. Uh, everybody loved him. And... Um, I think that's nice too, and that's a strength too. He can—I don't know how to say it in English. Um, he can yeah. just uh, pick up the support and uh, carry carry the supporters, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you mean. He's he's a he's a type of he's a leader. Uh, uh, and I would describe him as a okay. typical leader. Um, okay. Not for not for the squad. He, he he's still a very young player, so he has to be led sometimes too. But he's uh, he, as a fan favorite, he's very likable. If uh, okay. if he if he if he if he gives us everything, um, he's very likable. Yeah. So I, yesterday we were talking on Twitter, and you mentioned something about his mentality, and you said the following: with his current mindset and how that's impacting how he plays, he won't be a good player, even though he could be. So about that, can you go in more detail? What do you mean by that? What's actually wrong with his mindset? Mm, I think there's two things to be named with that. Uh, first of all, he kind of overrates himself and also is a bit arrogant sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And at, at least that's what it felt like. Um, if that's really the case, I don't know him, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But to give you an example, um, last season, I don't remember exactly when, I think it was sometime in April, um, he gave an interview in which he said that he wanted to play for a bigger club than Mainz and that he didn't care in which country and blah, blah, blah. But they should be in title contention and uh, that he's a young player who has to play and score goals. And you might wonder what's wrong about that. Um, when he gave that interview, he was actually benched at Mainz because our manager didn't like uh, his defense production and how he um, how he pressed uh, the, uh, the opponent and um, his offensive production wasn't much better either. So um, I think a 32-year-old who hasn't scored in like three months came in uh, uh, in his position. Um, 
And yeah, so he gave these interviews while well, he wasn't even good enough uh, to start for Mainz, but wanted to start and score for bigger clubs while well, he couldn't even do it at Mainz. So um, mm. that's the first point. And the second point is um, that he gets frustrated pretty quickly on the pitch, and you can see that. Uh, and that's when the, uh, the, second, uh, the second side of Mateta kicks in. And he just gets slow, and you notice how he slows down, how he's barely pressing the opponent. Um, but I don't want to be too negative about him. Um, during, his, as I said, during his first season, there were no such issues, and uh, he was loved by us fa as fans. And I really, really hope that this transfer brings back the old uh, Mateta because he's going to be a joy for you to watch. And I really, really hope that for you and for him. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, in Germany we say "die Luft ist raus," the air is out, like out of a balloon. Um, and I think that was the case for Ma Mateta and Mainz. Yeah. yeah. So are there any other weaknesses to his game apart from his mindset, which can be at times uh, holding back, which can hold him back at times? Yeah, it, it's his decision making in front of goal, to be precise. Um, but in general, I'd say his chance conversion rate, as I said uh, in the beginning. So he has to work on that. But apart from that, he's a very clinical finisher. Yeah. Okay, then. So we've got some questions from Palace fans who just want to know more about the player. We've got various questions that got sent in uh, through Twitter yesterday. So let's run you through some of them. So the first one is from um, Joe at Eagles. He asks, do you think he'll be a good player in the Premier League? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, if he adapts well to the Premier League, if he gets proper support, um, I think we're going to get into that a little bit later on. Um, yeah. I think uh, if if he if he fits into your system and if uh, if he's well supported, I think he can be a very good player in the Premier League. Um, yeah, he, he can be a very clinical finish, and I think that's very important in the Premier League. Yeah, and then uh, going on to the next one, Mark Drew at Mark Drew says, "Can he hold up the ball well, or does he feed off crosses?" So, what type of player is he? Is he like a more target man? Uh, he's he's a target man, yes, definitely. Um, yeah. He can do both. He can hold up the ball very very well, and he can also uh, feed off crosses. Um, and he, he scored many goals in his 14, 14 goal season with us um, by heading by by headers. And he could have had three or four or even more um, after that. And even this season, he could have scored two headers or so. Um, so I think uh, he has very good heading ability, but also um, if you want, he, if you pass him the ball, he's going to secure it and pro and play a good pass probably. Um, if you want to look um, for an example, just look up our highlights uh, against the Dortmund uh, against Dortmund last season, the away win. Um, he actually prepared the the cross that led to the to the to the one and zero goal. Um, and it was a phenomenal phenomenal play by him. Th that goal belonged 30, 40, 50 percent to him. Yeah. So, can do both so, very well. so of course, um, Colin asked at Brinskill Eagle. Of course, he had an injury, and Colin wants to know a bit about that because we were linked with him before, I believe, in the summer, um, yeah. where he might be coming off that injury. And he asked, "How much has his performance changed following his injury?" So you said it was quite a big injury that he had. Yes, um, he missed a total of fifteen league games, so he was out okay. for basically half the season. Um, it was something in his knee, I, guess, I think. Um, and before he got injured, he played his 14 goal season with us. Um, and when he came back, he struggled to get back in, um, to get back um, to old form. And he's never quite found it again. So when he came back, um, it was uh, a five and zero win away in Bremen, and um, he instantly scored like five minutes after he came on or 10 minutes after he came on uh, and everybody thought that he's finally back and uh, uh, that he's going to save us from relegation now which he we didn't get relegated but it wasn't his uh, really um, him who saved us but um, then he started very well into this season and we thought now he's finally back and then he fell back off so he's struggling uh, since his uh, injury yeah Oh, okay. He's been struggling. So let's see yeah. if him coming to Palace can help. But talking about him in a system, so we play a 4 4 2 at Palace um, and Zaha will be up front. So John asks, do you think he'll work better in a 4 4 2 alongside Zaha or as a focal point in, in a system like a 4 3 3 or 4 2 3 1? So in his 14, 14 goal season, we played a 4, uh, 4 3 1 2 mostly. Um, so um, I think um, him playing alongside Zaha will be very, very good. Um, right. So it's rather the the four for two for me. Um, 
out of the options you gave me because he struggled in the four two three one uh, last season. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I don't think it has any thing to do particularly with uh, the system we played, but he was very good in the 4-4-2 and I think that would be the way to go for you uh, alongside Zaha. Yeah, so what current or former player would you compare him to and how good do you think he can be at Palace, asked Russell at McCaw Tings? Um, to be honest, I don't watch a ton of Premier League games, um, yeah. but uh, um, my best guess would be to compare him to Tammy Abraham from Chelsea. Um, because of uh, the physical abilities um, and they're both young strikers so I think that fits um, pretty well um, but it's just a, a vague guess so don't take my word for it um, and yes as I said before I think he can be very good at Crystal Palace um, the talent is clear there nobody just scores 14 goals in the season in the Bundesliga and yeah. without having talent uh, at all so um, if there's proper support for him and if his mind gets a little bit cleared up from the move um, if we if if he settles uh, in well, I think he can be a very good player. So you did say that he scored goals in the Bundesliga, but um, Pat wants to know at P Rose, how does he score his goals? Are the majority of his goals coming from crosses into the box, or is he getting them behind in counter um, in counter attacks to go and finish them off? Yeah, as I said before, um, both. Um, he, he, there are a ton of goals he scored from getting him behind to, uh, with the defense and getting uh, uh, a good pass, uh, then scoring one on one with the keeper. Um, but there also were a ton of headers, so um, he can actually do both. And um, if he's if he's fed with good uh, with good balls, I think um, he's going to score a ton of goals. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, a uh, question from Crystal Panic. What a name. <laughs> at KDM M1000. Is he quick? Can, you know, yes, he gets in behind, but can he actually run past all them defenders or does he use his strength better? Uh, I think he's better off with his strength. I, I, I don't want to say he's slow at all, but I think yeah. uh, his strength is a key element in him, in him beating defenders. So um, he can be very quick, though. So uh, as soon as he picks up the pace, um, he's gone. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Look, thank you for joining me, Theo. Um, it's been very interesting to know all about the player. Of course, you watch him play and you, you there are strengths to this game by the things that you've said and there are also weaknesses. But let's see if a change in system works for Palace and best of luck for the season. Thanks, you too. And I hope he does well for you. I, as I said before, we loved him here and we all want to see him do good. So from, from what I've read on Twitter, um, you all thought we hated him. We don't. Yeah. We are just frustrated with him because uh, we've seen him do so, so good. And now he's just not playing as well. And if he's on the pitch, he always has this, this second side that I spoke about uh, on him. But mm. I think that is, this move can be very good for him. So if, he clear, if that clears his mind a bit and uh, if he figures things out, I think um, he has the talent to be a very good Premier League player. Best of luck. I'll be real with you. I am excited by the prospect of him signing, which he is going to, fingers crossed, because it is going to be different to what Roy's had in the past. We haven't really had any players since Roy Hodgson had joined the club who will speak out if things don't go well. And Medita, he's still young, and of course that's happened one or two times at Mainz, but if he's going to bring that same attitude to Palace, how is Roy going to react to that? And second of all, Another thing that's quite interesting is that he's tracking back. You know, in the past, there's been games where he hasn't really tracked back and done his defensive duties. And we know Roy as a manager. That's the one thing that you have to do. It doesn't matter if you're a striker, a centre-back, a midfielder. You need to defend. So we'll see what happens. I, I, I like the prospect. I love the fact that he's hungry. I love the fact that he's got ambition from a young age. Um, and there are some positives to his game as well. And it's an 18-month loan deal. He wants to prove himself. Hopefully he does. But let me know in the comment section what stood out for you the most and what Fio said. And do you think he'll be a success at Palace? And that's it for today. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. And until next time, up the Palace.